Well, hello to you. Today we're going to be talking about a scenario where you record your dialogue audio out on the field for an interview, and when you get back in to your computer and you start checking out the audio signal, you realize there's unwanted noise in the mix. Well, I'm going to talk about how to reduce that noise using both Adobe Audition and a third-party tool called Isotope. I made a video on this last year around August and it's been about a year and I wanted to do an update to that video. Not that much has changed in Audition, but I did want to show some other things that are out there. So if you're looking to reduce noise in your mix, in your dialogue, this is the video for you. Hey, my name is Oliver and on this channel I like to talk about audio for video as well as video production in general and composing. And if any of that stuff interests you at all, consider subscribing to the channel and joining the movement and the fam. I would love to have you on board. So jumping into Audition here with my HD 380 Pro headphones. If you don't have a pair of HD 380 Pro headphones, you're missing out. <laughs> I said headphones. So here's the scenario that we're looking at right here in Adobe Audition. It's an interview situation. We're sitting down, we're talking to somebody who's recorded with a overhead shotgun mic, which in my case is the Rode NTG3, into the Zoom H6. But sometimes after a lot of compression, if it's a really soft speaking subject, you can get kind of a hiss sound. So the video last year, I just had a whooshing sound that we tried to remove from a lavalier situation. This year for the noise reduction tutorial, we're talking about the hiss, the, the noise floor, the self noise generated from a microphone or a preamp. So what I'm going to show you in here is a already processed dialogue track. So I've already run it through all the compression and the EQ and the limiting and everything. So the levels are going to be really hot, ready for the mix. But because of that, we got a hiss. So just listening through here, this is what we're dealing with. Okay, we well, asked me the question again. So obviously she's really hot. There's a big hiss. You can hear breathing. You can hear flipping. The subject was unfortunately a little bit nervous. And so there was a lot of uh, smacking noises. She could probably use a decrackle, that kind of stuff. But the gist of this is the noise floor is too hot for my liking. If we go in here and just listen to a sample of her talking. Is to uh, use it for client marketing. Most men and women... In Adobe Audition, what you would do is zoom into an area of practical silence, meaning a place in your mix, in your recording rather, where you can find almost nothing but the noise floor. This is a critical piece. Here's something that I neglected to do in this shoot is I neglected to record the room tone or take you know 15 or 20 seconds to just record silence. That can be a really valuable asset because you can run it through the same processing, see what kind of noise flow you have, use it to capture a really high quality noise print. Because the noise reduction plugin in Audition runs based on your noise print. So this is a really critical piece. So right here we're looking on the screen. It looks like, wow, we got a phantom noise at like 24K. Man, this happens a lot. I'm like, there's a lot of noises that we don't hear that are actually happening in rooms that we exist in. So that's wild. Y'all wild. So let's just grab a cycle here and see what we're dealing with. Much better. We're going to cut that right before that big breath. And there's a little like pop sound that we're even going to go in front of here. There's another pop sound. I'm not sure what that is. But in between the pop sounds, the, the noise print cycle doesn't have to be huge. It just has to be big enough for the machine to capture the frequencies that you're trying to remove. So we're going to go up to effects in Adobe Audition, come down to noise reduction and restoration, and hit capture noise print. You can also hit shift P if you're on a map. And if you're on a PC, I don't know because I'm not on a PC. Sorry, but good luck. Once you have your noise print captured, you can hit shift Apple P and open up the noise reduction plugin. Or again, go up to effects, grab noise reduction and restoration, noise reduction process, which opens up kind of the dialog box of the actual noise reduction. Now what you're looking at is kind of like a spectral display of the noise floor itself from the high frequencies to the low frequencies, and that green is kind of your threshold. So if you mess with these settings, you'll kind of see those change in real time. I like to start with something really basic, 40% noise reduction at about 10 decibels. And let's just listen what that sounds like with our cycle. Output noise only. So that output noise feature is just going to show you exactly what it's removing. You can kind of do a before and after. So why don't we listen to this outside of a cycle with some dialogue and see what we got. Clicking output noise on and off. Mm -hmm. 
Now that noise, that funny noise is very important because what that tells you is that part of her actual dialogue audio is getting removed with the sound. It's not ideal, but it is the way it works for many noise reduction plugins, plugins that are stock with a program like Audition. So the way to deal with that is just mess with your settings. Listen to output noise only. Obviously the higher we go on noise reduction, the more of her voice comes out too. Obviously, the lower we go in noise reduction, the less of her voice comes out. But there's trade-offs there because then you're actually reducing less noise overall. So sometimes when you have a noise floor issue like this where it's hissing, you don't want to like completely remove it because many of our projects are going to have music behind it, which will help cover that up. So really, just the sweet spot is getting enough of it down that you don't notice it in the final mix. And when you're only working with stock plugins like this, this is really important. And if you can just imagine if you or your son or daughter, we want them to know that there are other options. And if you can just imagine if you or your son or daughter, we want them to know that there are other options. And if you can just imagine if you or your son or daughter. So when I'm absolutely slamming this, 100% noise reduction at 100 decibels, it doesn't actually sound that bad. We want them to know that there are other options. And if you can just imagine if you or your son or daughter. Now let's, we'll listen to it without it. We want them to know that there are other options. And if you can just imagine if you or your son or daughter... Turn it back on. We want them to know that there are other options. And if you can just imagine if you or your son or... So right there, you have a much cleaner sound. It's not removing too much of her dialogue, which is really important. The one thing you do get is a lot of the burbly gurgly sound, kind of that like weird metallic frequency thing happening. If we just take a cycle of some silence, I'm talking about this sound right here. Well, that was actually a phone too, but those are gurgly burblies. We don't want gurgly burblies in our mix. So there's a couple ways to deal with this. In the last video last year, I talked about adding a gate to your mix. We're not gonna talk about that today because for the most part, if you can get the sound down enough, you'll be okay if you don't have music. A gate is important. If you don't know how to use a gate, I have a video on how a gate works that is linked here in the video description. I'm gonna do a few before and afters right here with the Adobe Audition noise reduction. And you're gonna hear how much it's reducing as well as whether or not you hear that burbly gurbly sound in between what she's saying. Just a few months later, she passed away. After the class, just a few months later, she passed away. After the class, just a few months later, she passed away. After the class, just a few... Then we'll go back to our standard 40% reduction and 10 decibels down and see what that sounds like before and after. After the class, just a few months later, she passed away. After the class, just a few months later, she passed away. Okay, now I'm going to do something interesting now. I'm going to show you a tool by a company called Isotope that makes amazing audio plugins, and this one is called RX6 Advanced. We're going to pull up their noise reduction processor and hear the difference between that and Adobe Auditions. So this is RX6 by Isotope. I've already done the noise print and all that, but you're just going to listen to before and after of that, and then this versus Auditions. After the class, just a few months later, she passed away. After the class, just a few months later, she passed away. After the class, just a few months later, she passed away. After the class, just a few months later, she passed away. After the class, just a few months later, she passed away. After the class, just a few months later, she passed away. The key difference there is if you invest in high quality audio plugins, you don't get the artifacts, you don't get the strange sounds in between your dialogue. So that's really all from this one. And it's, it's very simple. It's all about just getting the best noise print you can and letting the program do its work. So again, the important things about noise floors, make sure to capture clean recordings on the front end so you don't have to go in and repair it and post. And if you do, don't forget to record room tone. That will really help you a lot if you're gonna have issues in post, especially if you have noisy mics. That's all for this week. If you like this video, please share it, like it, or comment because I'd love to comment with you and actually respond to your questions, talk to you, connect in ways that we can with keyboards online. It's really fun. And with nothing else, I will see you all next week.